sometimes our problem as meditators is that we've read too much, listened to too much about meditation. We know what happens at the end. And given our general impatience, we want to rush to the end. What we've heard about all the wonderful things that happen, when you gain discernment, when insight arises. And so we try to go straight there without building the foundation, without mastering the skills that are needed for that insight really to have an impact on the mind, to have the really desired effect, which is to train the mind to not create suffering for itself. So it's important to remember that what we are developing here is a skill, and the skill has to go through very basic steps. And it's important that we remember some of the teachings that we tend to look at as kindergarten teachings. And they really aren't. They're basic because they're important, like the basic principle of karma, that our lives are being shaped by the choices we make. That we'd rather go straight to choiceless awareness, where everything is okay. And it is true that at the moment of awakening, the mind is not making choices. It finally has arrived at a spot where, in not making a choice, it opens to the deathless. But to get to that point, you have to be practicing choiceful awareness first. In other words, being very clear about the choices you're making. For instance, right now, you could be staying with the breath or you could be focusing on something else. You could be breathing in one way, you could be breathing in another. You could be perceiving the breath simply as the air coming in and out of the nose. Or you could be perceiving the breath as a kind of energy, and you could perceive that energy as flowing or as still. There are lots of choices, and the fact is that we're making a lot of decisions all the time. The problem is a lot of those decisions are being made on default mode, so they're hardly aware of them. So if you think you're practicing choiceless awareness, what's actually happening is that you're closing your eyes to the the choices you're being, that you're making. Years back there was the story of the, the monk who had gone to Jamahabua's monastery and declared that he had no doubts about the Buddha's teaching. Which in the vocabulary of the monastery meant that it was a declaration of stream entry. So someone took this and reported it to Jamahabua. And John Mahabua put his eyes, <coughs> excuse me, put his hands over his eyes and said, I have no doubts about anything I see. I have no doubts about anything I see. Of course, you don't see anything with your hands over your eyes. The point he was making is that the monk was really not paying much attention. There's lots to doubt. There's lots to question yourself about in the practice. Not so much unskillful doubt, but there's a lot of skillful things you can have questions about and you want to explore. And it's the same with the choices. So many times we don't think we're making choices, and yet it's simply because the choices have gone underground. And one of the purposes of the meditation is to bring those choices up into the light of day so you can see them and learn how to make them more skillfully. In fact, by making them more skillfully, you get more and more sensitive to the choices that are being made on very subtle levels. So for the moment, I'm being choose to stay with the breath. And if you find the mind wandering off, come back to the breath again. And if it feels like there's a lot of effort put into focusing on the breath, well, make that effort. Because in setting up that intention, you give something for all your other intentions to bounce off. 
and that's how you become sensitive to them. When the mind seems to be totally placid and accepting everything that comes along, well, give it this choice to stay with the breath and see how accepting it is. If it's not accepting of this choice, you've got a problem. You can dig up some of the issues in the mind this way that you hadn't been sensitive to before. And realizing that the mind was making all these other choices and it liked wandering around or allowing thoughts to come in, because none of his choices were being challenged. So here you're challenging the choices. They be with the breath. But notice how you're breathing. Explore what kind of breathing feels good right now, because that's an area where you can exercise some skillful choices. Notice how you think about the breath. Notice how you evaluate the breath. Those are ways in which you make choices as well. You decide whether you like this kind of breathing or not. If you find something you like, well, stick with it to prove to yourself whether you made a good choice or not. And if it feels good for a while, that's okay. And if after all it doesn't feel good anymore, well, you can choose to change. It's through exercising your powers of choice that you become more sensitive to how they function, the impact that they have, and you get better and better at it. This is, as I said earlier, you can focus on the way you perceive the breath. When the breath comes in, where do you think of it coming in? What directions does it come in? You might want to explore first what directions it's already coming in before you decide to make some changes. Because when you breathe in, sometimes some parts of the body are getting breath energy coming from the front, and others are getting breath energy coming from the back. Some parts have the breath energy coming down from the top of the head, others have breath energy coming up from the soles of the feet. And they may be harmonious or they may be in conflict. This is something you can explore. Then you try to figure out how do we resolve some of those conflicts? How do we breathe and how do you hold a perception of the breath in mind that allows things to work together? So when the breath energy comes in, the whole body feels like it's being nourished and there's no sense of conflict. And as you stay with the breath, you begin to notice that the breath energy is moving in some parts of the body and in other parts of the body it's still. Now it can be still either because those parts of the body are being depleted of breath energy or being starved of breath energy. And sometimes it's because they're full. They don't need any more energy. And John Fuang's image is of a big jar of water. You know, in Thailand, when they collect rainwater, they have these enormous earthenware jars. And as long as the jar is empty, you could just put more water in, put more in, put more in. But you get to a point where it's full. And no matter how much more water you put in, it's just going to stay as it was. You can't make it even more full than that. And so it's a good idea usually to try to breathe in an energetic way as you begin meditating. And to think of the moving breath energy going through all parts of the body, waking up the different elements, waking up the different parts of the body, energizing them, until you gain a sensation that the, the breath energy is full and trying to push more energy into a particular part of the body is actually unpleasant. That's a sign you've got a section of the body that should allow, be allowed to be alone. And it's that sense of stillness that's full. That's what you allow to spread at the next stage. There's a Dharma talk where John Lee mentions that you don't want to spread the moving energy around. He's talking about this second stage, where it's just a sense of fullness, stillness, lightness, pleasure. Sometimes, paradoxically, the fullness feels empty. But there's a sense that it feels really good. 
You allow it to spread around. Let that spread through the body. And as all these still energy areas begin to connect up, you find that the breath gets a lot more refined. You can pursue this to the point where everything grows totally still. Your thoughts are still. The breath is still. The body feels filled with good energy. And the mind feels no need to go thinking about anything else. Of course, deep down inside, it's still making choices. It's choosing to stay right here, maintain what you've got. But a lot of other choices just fall away. You're not interested in getting involved with other things. And when other choices do come up or other intentions come up, you see them very clearly. How they form at that frontier area where they could be mental or they could be physical. There's this kind of stirring that you feel. And you can just leave it as a stirring in the breath energy, or the mind could slap a perception or a label on it and turn it into a thought. But as you're staying right here, you realize you're right at that point where that kind of decision is being made, and you can, for the time being, decide no thoughts, no thoughts, no thoughts. When little eddies of breath energy threaten to turn into nodules, okay, just allow them to dissolve away. Because you want to get really, really skilled at what the mind is like when a very minimal level of fabrication or a very minimal level of choice is going on. So you get more and more sensitive to choices when they happen. So this is how you approach that advanced level of meditation where the mind is making fewer and fewer choices by making lots of choices and being very sensitive to the fact both of how you're making the choices and what the results are. You're practicing choice full awareness. And it's in learning how to choose to be still and to choose the various ways of breathing and perceiving the breath and perceiving any distractions that may come up in such a way that you can maintain this stillness. You're going to be thinking about inconstancy, stress, not self, anichang, dukkha, anatta. Focus that analysis on the distractions. Allow your concentration and your awareness of the breath to be as constant and pleasurable and as under control as you can. Because it's exercising these choices that you get really, really sensitive to what's going on. So when the moment comes that genuine lack of choice happens, you're poised right at the right at the threshold of something really important. And it's because you've developed this sensitivity to choice that you can detect even the slightest glimmerings of a choice that may come up in the mind and let them go. So don't be in too great a hurry to get to the end point. What you should be focusing on is making sure you've got the basic choices down pat. It requires patience, because everybody, of course, would like to go straight to the end. But you can't go to the end until you've gotten really sensitive about the basics. Your choice to keep coming back to the breath and to choose skillful ways of breathing. Those are the choices that will open things up inside. It may not be as quickly as you'd like it, but it is effective. Otherwise, if you try to force it, you end up going nowhere at all. <laughs>